What's good, YouTube? Today, we are starting our book publishing company. So, it's going to be called Afternoon Waffles. Boom. Afternoon Waffles Incorporated, actually. The book I'm working on right now is called Jet the Wanderer, right? So, this book is about a boy named Jet, and he's a bounty hunter. But he's a bounty hunter that everybody actually loves, and he finds that burdensome for some reason. This is the world map right here. It's called Sarabia. And it has, it's not factions, I call them countries. So it has three countries. The Chio Dynasty up here, Arcadia, and Camelot. Yes, the same Camelot as King Arthur. And King Arthur is actually the king as of, in the story. So back here, I just wanted to like sketch myself a whole entire detailed family tree for Arcadia, and this is Camelot. And on the other side, the Chio Dynasty. This is how I lay out my story. I have four arcs, four seasons. People love the longevity of an anime or manga, but me, I that's not me. Personally, you have to get to all like the good parts. So the good parts is keeping it short, having making it very informational, and educational and fun so boom this is how i line it up and this right here is the plots well this is how i want it to look like i'm not these are not panels these are not panels chat these are actually just me sketching out the plot points if you go from left to right you can see that as the a plot is happening there's a b plot and a c plot happening so the viewers are always engaged and always wondering what's happening next. Let me show you all the characters that Jet will come across in the whole entire storyline. And look, this is the map, right? Jet lives in Camelot. So the whole story starts in Camelot. But he's going to explore this whole entire continent. Instead of a soft magic system, I, went, I lean towards a hard magic system because I really like when stories are explained to me like through show, not tell, but I really enjoy just always thinking about stuff, even if the show doesn't tell me. So this world works on soul weapons, naturally. All right, so this is how the world works. Everybody in this whole entire continent, actually the whole entire world, is born with a natural ability. They can, they can learn to use it or learn not to use it, but they still have it regardless, regardless if it's small or not. People might say it's like quirks, but it's not. It's not really quirks because in My Hero Academia, the quirks, not everybody has quirks. Some people are quirkless. But in this world, everybody has an individual power that they can fester up. Basically, in this universe, when you become of age, like seven, when you know what's happening in the world, you can slowly discover your powers or even younger than that because your parents can tell you. But... Your powers is whatever you enjoy, whatever you love. Like, say, for example, somebody just happens to love snails. I don't know why, but eventually, over time, they will get an attribute of a snail, but it depends on how they use it. So the whole entire story, this whole entire world is based off of my life and how I experience the world and how I see things. I'm probably going to do, like, little Stan Lee cameos for myself, be in the manga or the anime, you know, just put myself in there because why not? First, we have Victor. Victor's ability is... Okay, so in my life... Okay, I have to explain it to you. Me as a person growing up, there was a lot of like black magic and voodoo in my life. So this character right here just ha is like basically a demonic person. Well... The embodiment of a demonic person. The embodiment of evil, really. He comes from right here, Exile Isle. So basically, everybody from Exile Isle are people that were too powerful, too evil, or whatever, or just exiled in general from their natural country, and they were put right here. He has the power to speak to jinns. The thing about voodoo is it's a two-way street. And most of the time, no, a lot of the time, the jinn is controlling you. You're not controlling the jinn. So all these curse marks and all these little scrolls that he has are literally just pocket gins where he can call them. But in exchange, 
he sacrificed his life. So basically, he doesn't even own his own body, really. We finally come across Jet and his best friend, Gecko. All right, so Jet and Gecko are both best friends, both in the same guild. Well, it's a guild only because... So basically, I do not know the difference between clans, guilds, and stuff like that so basically the demonic lotus is an organization that helps stop people with soul weapons well let me explain soul weapons to you guys the real story starts off with luther and simon the king the king of camelot king arthur's dad king simon and luther the prodigy of the chio dynasty camelot and the Chio Dynasty have been fighting for ages, eras actually, to the point where you can see right here, this little split right here was made by Simon and Luther during the last, the last four or five wars. Nah, it was just one war ago. This is, this basically is based off of the next generation after the crisis. So there are six soul weapons within the whole entire continent. The soul weapons were discovered during the time of Simon and Luther. Before the discovery of the soul weapons, everybody was, I wouldn't say living in harmony because it depends on what the person is, what their morals is, this, that, and the third. But it was, it was fair because everybody was born with abilities and their own mindsets, right? Then when they discovered the soul weapons, the soul weapons amplify anybody's ability. Once they get the soul weapon and it binds to them, like it's literally a blood bind until you die, like a... I guess they would say it's like the one piece, but it's not a one piece because it's six soul weapons. There are many other soul weapons around other continents, but that's not where the story is right now. The Demonic Lotus is here to stop anybody that would like to use their soul weapon for corruption. The king of the Chio dynasty. This is Al and this is Akira. Basically, the way they do it is, is tournaments. In the Chio dynasty, they do tournaments to see who's going to be the right hand of the king. So, Al and Akira, actually, that's Al and Akira, right? They happen to be the last two survivors in the first, well, the first time ever seen in the tournament where there's only two survivors and they're battling, they're fighting for, like, a whole day, like, until the king just stops the fight and says, you know what, you guys are both, you guys are both able to do it. Here's the thing about soul weapons. Soul weapons are unique, Right? But that's not stopping anybody from trying to discover how to mimic it and make synthetic soul weapons. The whole entire B plot, right, is about the synthetic soul weapons and who's making them and where they come from. Captain Percival and his little group. All right, so Captain Percival is from, as you can tell, Camelot. That's Captain Percival. And then he has, that's Blue. That's Leonardo. And that's Sam. Blue is King Arthur's daughter. So she's always going to be... So you always see her in Camelot. But this is when they were younger. And in the story, it starts off when they're older. This right here is Blue. Right? And Blue really loves dogs. So all of, all of these right here are Blue's lap dogs. Arcadia, the Prince of Arcadia. That's something right there. The way that Arcadia works is completely different than everywhere else. So imagine Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, all that. That is that is how the people of Arcadia work. So the mom is the current leader because he's too young, but she still has bodyguards, as you can see. This boy right here is the whole entire C plot. And it comes full circle with the A plot and mixes with the B plot. And I, uh, it's just, I, I really, I really enjoy the series. Okay, we have Gabriel. So Gabriel was exiled due to the fact that King Arthur didn't want him to be the next successor after him. He wanted his daughter to be it. So he got kicked out. But in the first, in the first season, the first arc, he comes back. He comes back with the vengeance. Gabriel is not the only one that got exiled. His group consists of people that were exiled from other places, like her. She was exiled from Arcadia. And then these two right here were exiled from the Chio dynasty. These are the exiles. <laughs> Call them the exiles, I guess. The Aboriginal forest, okay? Next up, we go to the Aboriginal forest. These are the members of the Aboriginal Forest. These characters actually branch off into my other stories that somehow connect to this story. It, I've been writing stories for years. And I, for me, mentally, they somehow all connect to each other. 
and will possibly have a cameo on crossover but that's how my brain works these are all characters that i have made in the past like during my childhood and i just redrew them in like their own way and fashion in this world but that's the leader and that's the one that exiled the last person this right here is the elites they don't exist on the map only on the fact that this whole place is actually hidden like like there's people with powers that can make invisible force field i'm telling you your power can go as high and as powerful as you want it to in the story it's still a life source any ability that you use in this universe is tapping into your life source so if you're out here just using abilities left and right without like trying to take a deep breath and recover just like in reality you'll probably die from overheating you'll probably die from just exercising too much or just die from using your powers too much but i'm not doing no chakra system or any key systems it's just life energy really it's like us in this real world we don't have no key or anything so okay the reason why i'm not adding any chakra key or anything and life energy is completely different is because i want to feel as if if there was real power scaling i want them to use my manga or com my manga or anime to actually like show real power scaling because i'm be honest power scaling in different universes never made sense to me because you have to bring one character from one universe and then bring put them in a universe where they can both equally and fairly fight but it's a fight so it doesn't make sense but if we use life energy just us human beings will be able to actually calculate how strong a person is in my manga i don't know i probably just overthought all that i don't know i don't care but if you really want your artwork and your like masterpieces to go out there and be published without having to go through the hassles just join afternoon waffles will make sure that your stuff is out there being read being looked at I really would like to compete with companies like DC Comics, Marvel's, Shonen Jump. Like, I want Afternoon Waffles to be competing with the big companies because I feel as if the big companies are not giving anybody a chance to bring in new new mangas or comics or anything. It's always going to be based off of what's trending and nostalgia in the past. Like, nothing new. I want to bring some new energy to the reading world because I really enjoy reading and I, I really want people to read more. So I want to make a really, really, really interesting comic series. I hope you guys really enjoyed my series, my graphic novel, my manga, my comic, whatever you call it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys will read it when it comes out. If you guys want more content with afternoon waffles and stuff like that or you just want to show your content in afternoon waffles, just... Go to the link down below, join, become a member of the group, and then post whatever you need to post. And as the company grows, you grow with us. So feel free to do whatever you need to do. And y'all already know, as usual, love y'all all. Stay safe.